begin. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on this uh, fine day uh, to go and talk about our IVIN loyalty overview. My name is Keith Morrison. I am the Manager Consulting for Africa and it's really wonderful to go see people from across the globe going and uh, joining us again for another one of these wonderful sessions. So, all right, so let's get on with it. Quick thing on the overview today is, yes, the loyalty overview. Mm -hmm. Big surprise there. Uh, loyalty config, programs, plans, and finally at the end, just a little section about IVN passes. Because it is so closely intertwined with loyalty, I am just going to go talk about it. I'm not really going to go show so much, but I am going to talk about it. IVN passes is, uh, as they say, a topic for another day. All right, but before I carry on any further, can I just get some hands up if everyone can actually go see my screen? Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you, JP. Thank you, Paul. And Eddie Wilcox was offline. Oh, dear. All right, but that's fine. Okay. Or oh, Eddie, are you back online? Because you're, you're not being attentive at the moment. Okay, all right, so... Thanks, guys. Okay, if you could just put your hands down and then, uh, yeah, uh, as always with my webinars, I do encourage questions. Um, I, please don't leave them to the end because nine times out of ten, I find somebody has then gone and forgotten the question or otherwise there's an issue or otherwise it's something else and they've been distracted or they're offline. Rather, ask the question as soon as you get it. Uh, please remember there are no stupid questions except the ones that are not asked. So, uh, once again, ask them, ask, ask, ask. All right, so let's go in and just have a quick look at this on the loyalty overview side. So, and once again, I have my handy dandy view of the deployment landscape that we can all go and have a look at. Once, uh, this is one of my favorite slides because it does explain everything wonderfully about Ivan, including one thing that you might have noticed is missing, and that is, drum roll please, Ivan loyalty and the crowd goes wild and there is a very simple uh, a very simple reason for this is that Ivan loyalty is completely integrated end to end from e-commerce to pause from Ivan passes to mobile pause store to enterprise it's all through the whole system guys it's everywhere right get used to it that over there is certainly one of the major things about the system. And it's one of the big advantages of iVent is that it is not something that has been tacked on the side. It is not something that has been, that is an afterthought that is uh, running in the background that all of a sudden falls over because it just feels like it. It is built in throughout the system. And please remember as well is that loyalty can be run by itself without going and having anything else attached to it, without being uh, attached to Ivent itself. I, loyalty can be run as a standalone system. In fact, that is one of the reasons I was picking on Eddie earlier because Eddie is one of the guys who is actually going and running a stand, is working on a standalone uh, implementation of Ivent loyalty. Now, so, and please remember with the Ivent APIs, that does mean you can integrate to just about anything. Yes, step one for world domination. So, uh, moving on, okay, let's go and, uh, on a more slightly more serious note, back to reality, uh, let's go and have a look over here at some of the things. So, loyalty configuration, loyalty plan, and group membership. Now, uh, this is slightly different webinar for, uh, from the ones I normally run, guys, because normally by now, I've actually gone and run out of slides and gone and said, hey, let's go to the demo. In this particular case, uh, I do actually have some more slides. Yay, more death by PowerPoint. Well, not really. We're going to go and try and keep it straight, forward, and reasonable. And then we're going to have more death by PowerPoint. So, all right, let's go. To, uh, let's go have a, uh, go on and have a look. And the one of the first and major things that people need to know about when activating loyalty is the is active uh, checkbox over here. And let's go across and actually have a look at our management console. And over here in system administration, system initialization, enterprise. Right, we scroll down and it comes to a major question. Loyalty is active, yes or no? If this is not ticked, you will not see loyalty. Uh, and also, it's uh, once it is ticked, it's ticked. Uh, you can't turn it off again. So, 
just be careful on that. Please do remember that the base iVend uh, license does come with a thousand loyalty users. So that is something else to remember. And uh, particularly for you consultants to just go and remind your salespeople out there, loyalty is a subscription license, right? Not a, uh, not a, uh, your normal perpetual. So just keep an eye on that. Though remember, we do go throw in those extra couple of licenses just so that you can go and play around with it. So loyalty is active. Once this checkbox is activated, then, well, normally it goes and it asks to restart the system. But there we come over here to operations. And you get this entire lovely section of loyalty to go play with. And the crowd goes wild. Okay, and over here, this is all the bits and pieces that you can have that you can have a look at and play with over here. And we're going to go through some of these in a minute. But first, back to PowerPoint. So moving on, a couple of things that we do need to go and have a look at over here is, all right, and this is the first thing that you do need to go set up is your actual loyalty setup in the system. But please remember that you can have multiple loyalty programs. So it's not like the old days. Back in the old days, it was just one loyalty program. Today, right there, and in fact, for quite a while now, 6.5 has been with us for a while, guys. So you can have multiple loyalty programs. And the entire idea about this is that you might have different ones per region. You might have different ones per store type, particularly if you've got uh, multiple subsidiaries. So you've got... You can have multiples of those over there. So, but as well, one of the most important things to remember about the loyalty program is the loyalty program works with currency and not just works with currency, it works on currency. Now, I know most of you already know that the loyalty, things like the loyalty allocation method, bonus points and all the rest of it. Points is the big thing that we always talk about in currency, but quite frankly, what is the point of points? The fact of the matter is, is that the loyalty program over here is linked to a base currency. That means that, for instance, if I was in, say, the UK and I had stores in the US, the US would have a separate loyalty program running because they'd be running in dollars, not pounds. And the entire idea with that is, uh, the entire idea is to go stop what they call triangle uh, arbitrage which is basically um, where you can go, and, which is basically where I go and I end up with points at my US branches. I then go across to my British branches and redeem the same points for pounds, which essentially means that then the company goes and picks up the tab for things like, well, uh, currency exchange controls and things like that. Not to mention that also you start messing with the deep and murky world of international banking. Yeah right there. So unless your client is the mob, I don't know of two, I, I, I personally, I don't know of any of, uh, any of our clients who are, but if uh, unless that is the case, you probably want to go steer away from going and keeping the same loyalty program across two different currencies. So with that in mind, let's, uh, with, that, uh, with that little disclaimer out of the way, on to the next couple of steps of the actual loyalty program. Now, the first thing over here is, first and one of the biggest things is the registration method customer code is one that normally pops up. Please remember that if it is customer code, it is um, a customer code is obviously linked to your actual to your actual business partner over here, right, which would be, which is actually what you'd go and you'd end up loading up. Um, so the entire idea with this is you maybe, uh, you maybe don't want to do that because remember, essentially your customer code does become a debtor when integrated to your ERP system. So you could end up with a uh, with a customer who's got loyalty as well as a credit limit, which is okay. It's not a problem, but at the same time can cause more issues than you really want. Other registration methods that do follow are by loyalty code, which means that there is actually just a loyalty uh, your loyalty card over here, which means that it's just a straightforward loyalty card. It's not actually linked through to the data, which means that you can actually do transactions against the, it, all the transactions will technically go against the cash customer uh, when they're loaded into the ERP. However, over here on the loyalty side, they will actually be split out into the loyalty membership. And then finally, customer code linked to a loyalty card, which might seem a bit odd to go and have uh, a sort of combination of the two, but it does mean that you can have multiple loyalty cards linked to one customer. Uh, 
Next one up is the card management field, which is now how do we actually go and manage what these are? Are they going to be used to find? Which means that your which means that at the actual point of sale over here, somebody goes and types in the actual uh, the actual uh, balance. Uh, otherwise, it could be something as it could be. Um, uh, computer controlled, which means that you will actually have a, doc a numbering series that will go and in uh, increment for each of the cards, or you could have it as pre-printed, which means that you get your cards from your printer, they go and uh, you can then go and have those loaded and activated into the system when you go. Uh, having a pre-printed does mean that you can actually shuffle them around the, uh, uh, the stores so you know exactly which cards are at which store. Next up, level allocation method, and this is a very, very important one because this actually determines how and what sort of points are awarded when and where. So, is it on, and how exactly do they go between the levels? So, are, is it on total available points, or is it on, uh, or, uh, or is it on total awarded points? or total available currency or total awarded currency. Guys, there is nothing really stopping you from mixing points and currency, besides from the fact that it will get confusing. I don't recommend it. Really, I don't recommend it. You can, you're going to end up with, with issues over there. So, all right, but uh, that is your, uh, so please rather keep it as points or currency. It's just easier. So, the total available, total awarded, there we go, total available or total awarded points of currency. That is all available over here. Now, the important things about this is, so, once again, select total available points or total awarded points. Total awarded points does mean that you are going to go end up with points just going and accumulating a lot. Bonus points or currency units on registration. So, depending on what your base currency is for uh, this specific uh, subsidiary, and normally your loyalty program will be either linked to the main system or it will be linked to a subsidiary. If it's linked to a subsidiary, it will go pick up the base currency code from that subsidiary. Uh, in this particular case, I'm in dollars and I haven't gone and segmented my, oh, well, I haven't got subsidiaries in this database. So bonus currency points, big thing for people. Bonus points, mm, bonus points are always good. Award criteria, is it on every transaction or on a cumulative basis? Once again, this is also a very important setting over here. Every transaction means that I get points on every transaction I do. So, I do a transaction, I get points. Woo! Right. Otherwise, cumulative basis. You have, you have come to us and spent so much at us this week or this month or this year. That means that you're a platinum part, partner. Please remember as well, when you are setting up things over here, is you are going to have to get a cashier to explain it to a customer. Um, that is also something that you do need to go and remember, particularly a bit further down for some of our uh, for some of our conflict resolution and redemption methods. Um, that is something you do need to go watch out for. So uh, next one up: duration of customer special days, and this is something that can really start to go pull in the customers. Um, do you go and say? Congratulations, it's your, it's your birthday, double points today, right there, but hang on, wait, but it's only for today, or do you do days backwards and forwards, which means that for two days before and maybe one day after your birthday, you get points. Um, that is particularly handy if, you're, if the store closes for, say, weekends, or if it's, uh, uh, I know in some places, particularly with uh, things like liquor stores or uh, um, or uh, tobacco, tobaccoists or places like that, they are mandated times when they have to close. Um, this does mean that unfortunately, um, your day, uh, that unfortunately they, will, they may not be open for these specific days, that they are uh, actually, that it's the person's birthday, which means that days back and forwards works a bit better. Um, week is also something uh, is also something you might want to look at or month. However, please do remember that with week and month, it, the person's birthday might fall on the first day of the week or the last day of the week. It also depends on when your week is. Does your work does your week work Sunday to uh, Sunday to Saturday or is it uh, Monday to Sunday? Right, conflict resolution basis. Yes, 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 we are the UN. Uh, no, not really. Okay, the whole reason for conflict resolution uh, basis and conflict resolution method 
is very important. Now, these two over here determine exactly how you are going to go and uh, how you're going to go and resolve some of the issues that go that go pop up. Please remember that you can go and have multiple plans. So what happens if you have a plan? Uh, so you'll have a basic plan. You could have a special day for your store. And you could have a special day for your customer. Now, how do you determine which, uh, which points the customer gets for which day? Does he go and he gets the? Does he just get the special points for uh, for the plan that he's actually do for the plan for that day, or for that store, or does he get the special points for the special day for himself, or does he just get the basic plan? So over here, you've got global or plan global, and finally conflict resolution method, which is minimum, which in the example I've just given would mean that he only gets the bare minimum of the points, which might be a bit miserable. Try and avoid that one. Uh, maximum, which is what I've got it, so it will go and see, it will compare which points he gets between all the plans and then give him the most points that he can get from a specific plan. So if it's his birthday plan that he gets the most points from, he'll get them. He'll use the birthday plan. Next up is the sum total, which means he gets all the points, just all of them, completely. You know, so all the points from all the plans at all the time. And then finally, the average, which, yeah, you might not want to do that one. Average, yeah, it's a bit like minimum. But yeah, not something that they necessarily want to do. But at the same time, I am going to, uh, at the same time, this does bring me on to, uh, with these settings, it does bring me on to a very important point about loyalty. Loyalty is, uh, is a living, breathing thing. It does need people to come and actually say, hey, ha have you tried our loyalty program? It needs somebody to run it. It's not a fire and forget thing. It's not a setting that just, it's not a batch of settings that gets set there and then forgotten. Somebody needs to actually run it. And as you, as we get further into this, you can actually see that it requires management, quite a bit of management in some cases, and it also needs people to go and actually work it and try and get it, um, and try and actually go and get it out there into the streets so people actually use it. If it's just set up and then forgotten, people don't use it. All right, so then also loyalty management method, is it automatic? So what we mean over here, person has enough points to move from bronze to silver. Does he automatically move from bronze to silver? Or does he go and actually sit there, or does, he actually, does somebody actually have to come along on say manual and go say, hey, I like you a lot. Okay, you can, you can be silver now, all right there. Or, do, or is it ex, uh, automatic after so many number of days, which means that you have to keep the points there if you're on bronze, and then after, say, 30 days, okay, all right, now, yeah, you, you passed the bar. You, you've cleared the test. Okay, we're going to move you on to, uh, uh, on to silver now. All right, redemption method is very important over here because your current level and you, uh, current level is the one I normally recommend unless you want a math lesson. Right, the other one is fallback, which combined with the settings that you can have for loyalty plans can actually mean that your points end up being a lot less. Um, current level is the one I suggest because then it will just go say, okay, I want to redeem all my points for platinum. Yes. If that's the case and you've got 400 points, you will get 400, you will get $400. If you set it to fallback it will, and you are set to platinum, it will then go say, oh, okay, right, you've got 400. Okay, no, hang on, wait, now we go back to gold. Okay, so now your points are slightly less, and now we go back to silver, and now your points are even less, now we go back to bronze for the last bit. So actually your points that, you thought you had $400 worth of points, but actually you only have like $200. So avoid. Uh, and that is one of the uh, uh, one of the reasons I tell you to uh, tell people to avoid it, is because you're going to have some poor cashier over there going and trying to explain to somebody going and saying, "Well, I thought I had four hundred dollars worth of points," and instead they're going to have to go and say, "Oh, uh, well, um, wait, let me get my calculator and an Excel spreadsheet and a PhD to go and explain why all of a sudden your points have disappeared down the drain." Next one up, refund method. Yay! Do you refund points or not? Right, could be the case. Points expiry, o uh, override allowed. Do you allow people to go and override the expiry dates? So, for instance, I've been away. Or will I get back and go say, wait, 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 wait. I've got, you know, a billion points or something like that that I want to go spend. 
uh, can I go and uh, can I have a, a bit of grace period and you can go give people say 30 days where they can go and actually do their, po uh, they can go spend their points. At the same time, then afterwards, you can also put in a manager override for another 30 days. So effectively, the people get 60 days to spend their points, even though they're technically expired. So something else to notice, to note. Email notification, SMS notification. Yeah, I don't need to explain those. Uh, email SMS service interval. Um, the reason we have an interval for this, guys, is because otherwise you get your email or service interval going and running continuously and if that is sitting at the store yeah that could be problem so right particularly if it's not a particularly strong store server you don't want that you want it to go and just run and uh, just go check where things are also people don't necessarily need to be updated every single second of the day for their points having a small interval just so that uh, it doesn't go try spam everyone is not a bad idea and uh, please do be aware with the email st uh, email things is that I see more and more these days. Um, there are websites that go and have issues or they will go and try and pick you up as spam. Even if you are not spam, a ver one of the examples that I keep on seeing is, for instance, Gmail. Even when you are going and e uh, emailing a perfectly normal email from Gmail to some of the sites out there, they will pick you up as spam purely because of the volume of Gmail that gets sent worldwide. It is one of the world's largest mail providers, similarly with Yahoo or Hotmail as well. They also get issues. So um, that can also be an Just please be aware that you can get onto spam lists perfectly innocently just because you have that, um, that volume of mail. SMS notification. Uh, yes, there's less spam stuff for SMS, but there are programs out there that are now picking it up. Truecaller being one of them. Uh, your uh, yeah, and uh, as well, uh, exchanging loyalty data between stores. Guys, this is actually quite an important one, and for this, I'm actually going to go back to my PowerPoint slides just to in show, and we're going to go over here. And the reason we go and we would exchange loyalty data between stores is that under normal circumstances, iEvent will query from the POS to the store server and then up to enterprise server to go and get the actual information on the uh, on the person uh, and his loyalty points. Um, it doesn't actually go and query across uh, across stores. And so if the person normally spends stuff at the store, those loyalty data will sit here and at the enterprise. If the internet does go down, it does mean that they are, that it is going to limit the amount of lo loyalty data that is actually at the store server. With the with the setting over here, right? Exchange loyalty data between stores. It will actually exchange loyalty data between this store and this store, which means that all of your stores will be up to date. It does increase the amount of band uh, of bandwidth usage that is out there. Um, it does mean that uh, you will need to go and t it. Normally, it's okay. It's not unless you have thousands upon thousands of loyal, or, or loyalty transactions happening daily. You should be fine. But it does mean that if the internet does go down, and one person goes from say store one to store two, store two will have his loyalty details available. Award points on loyalty tender. So, if I spend loyalty points, do I get loyalty points? conundrum for the sages so right that is something that uh, that is something that we can do it is available out there it is something that people uh, uh, can set up and they do want um, so I get points for spending on loyalty points I guess it does happen somewhere uh, do not award points with redemption so if I go and I redeem certain items for loyalty uh, do I go uh, then I won't get any points for uh, for redeeming them and then just be careful about these two checkboxes guys uh, it's not going to go check that you've got both of them checked and they can conflict with each other and then finally include tax in award points so do I then go take the tax off or not uh, and that is something that is quite important because otherwise you go and you can get uh, and that will also depend on which country you're in. Some countries, uh, it, it, loyalty points don't count as a form of legal tender, so they're not technically taxable. In other countries, they are. Be careful. Then finally, the loyalty website. 
and yeah we're going to need to go move along a little bit quick uh, quicker than this to go get to it but I will try and show you this as well this will actually go linked through along with your report names and transaction receipts so you can actually see who spent what where when and how why so all of those wonderful things as well as you can also add logos for this specific loyalty program if you want uh, then we're just going to quickly go ahead along to loyalty points expiry there and a couple of things you do need to know is that you can have as many expiry uh, lines as you want depending on which method you can either have them as fixed or sliding if it is fixed you put in an expiry date over here which point uh, with fixed ones they normally expire at the year end or the end of the fiscal year depending on where it is uh, the airlines used to be quite big on this with their loyalty with their rewards programs that would expire at year end so and they always had year ends of funny times of the year like uh, August or September so you had to go places otherwise you're going to lose all your points in September weird I know but it happens but other options we have over here is you can select specific customer codes so I suppose if you select a customer codes you could always go say um, let's have a look over here so I really don't like Paul yeah or maybe Joseph yes Joseph Tyler I don't like you your your points are going to expire at the end of the year but everyone else's points are going to expire some other time otherwise you could actually go select customer group which means that for instance your uh, your your wholesalers uh, they might get a different set of, of points for them uh, to be very honest the one I normally see is on the loyalty levels so for instance the bronze level might go and expire in say uh, bronze you get 90 days whereas if you are on platinum well we are going to go put you back on sliding and maybe you get uh, 730 days to go and actually spend your points so two years to spend your points as opposed to the peons on bronze who only get 90 days to go spend their points so things like that remember this is part of the living breathing loyalty system um, and that is why it lives and it breathes because if you go and you use this you can actually massage it and get uh, it's all part of what they call gamification and get people invested in the program and that's the big thing as soon as people invest in the program then they are after going and getting their points up and since they're after getting their points up they get their friends and family involved and soon it's an addiction and then it's uh, narcotics anonymous and yeah well we won't go down that route or otherwise it's amway so or quicksaw as they called these days or one of those things they keep on trying to try, trying to hide themselves from being a pyramid scheme anyway so like I said you can actually go set this up to be a pyramid scheme oh wait no I didn't um, you can actually go set up things like that because you can award things like um, for your referrals so uh, for instance I'm going to award bonus points and registration I sign up Eddie to be uh, to this I get points for him being signed up and I can also get bonus points for his first transaction I can then go and start adding an additional rows and additional points the more he spends the more I earn and the more people he signs up the more people go and so on and so on it goes please once again be careful the uh, and we move into the rather vague shadowy shadowy realm of um, what is allowable uh, allowable in certain countries some countries do allow this some countries do not please check your local regulations where they apply before you go and you set this up um, as also just aware uh, just go and inform or more likely just inform the customer that they just need to be aware of this because otherwise yeah they could be in trouble further down the line and at least if you go and you've told them in an email hey you know right there you've informed them of what of what to do all right so that is now our loyalty program set up please remember you can go get those all nicely set up in whichever way you want and from there we can actually go and have a look at some of the rest of our different setups now before we do we jump into loyalty plans there are some things that I do want to go and have a quick look at in the actual system and one of them is uh, the loyalty special days now the loyalty special days are for instance things like uh, your shop opening as you can see I need to select which loyalty program this applies to I can then give it a code call it 01 and let's call it store opening and you can go select which special date it is so if it is say for instance the it's our 30th birthday or however it is you can go set this up that people can go then uh, get double points or whatever they want on that day for this specific uh, for their birth well for the store's birthday this in particular this special day over here only 
applies uh, norm, will only apply to the days you set it up for. This is not the customer special days. Customer special days are set up in your business partner. Okay, and these are the ones that are set up as your date of birth and your anniversary date. So we do cater for both of them. So yeah, guys, uh, we do have both of them. Uh, the anniversary date is always one people don't expect. Normally, they're just expecting date of birth. We do both because, well, let's be honest. Uh, let's be honest. It's always nice to go and have that anniversary warning come up. Okay. So from there, we can also go and have a look at things like our loyalty notifications. So we have multiple loyalty notifications that get set up by default with the system. You can set up more if you want. Okay, and these are things like, for instance, new user creation. And over here on, under type, you will see that there is actually a setup over here. Uh, where you, Well, there's actually a drop down. I'm just going to go select new. And you can go say so many points from next level, user crosses into next level, uh, into next level, loyalty points, statement, uh, user awards or redeems points, points about to expire, or card transfer. We'll get into some of those a bit later. The important thing to notice, uh, to note about all of these is that they are attached to a specific layout. So a specific email or SMS template. So once you've selected your type, you select your email SMS template, which email address you are sending it from, and please, this is my email address. Don't use that in the setup. They should provide you their own uh, their own email address, preferably something like loyalty at customerstore.com or something like that. And also which email display name you want to use. So please remember these are, are these email SMS templates link through to our email and SMS templates over here under application setup where it says email or SMS templates. Yay, new user creation, for example. And once it goes and it loads up, uh, we do have a separate uh, separate video on how exactly these work, including how to use things like your uh, like your different variables, uh, where they look at, what you can do, embedding into YouTube videos, uh, into the email site. You can't embed YouTube videos into the SMS, but you can into the email. So, um, as well as how you go and you set this all up, please view that. Uh, there you go, guys. You now have homework. Enjoy. Okay, from there we are now quickly going to move uh, quickly and swiftly going to move back to loyalty levels. Now, loyalty levels are something that is very important to the system, and also depends on how many you want. Okay, first off, you have to note is that you must have at least one loyalty level. Its minimum value must be at least zero. And yes, please note, I have had partners who have gone through and who have changed the loyalty, the minimum value of this in the background, and then they wonder why nobody's earning any loyalty. You need to have a ground floor which people can get in on. So once you have this set up, you need to have, uh, it needs to be zero, so minimum value means they will automatically join this level. If they can't earn points, they're not going to move any further forward, and you need to join a level in order, in order to earn points. From here, you can set up things like your points conversion factor, which is how many points to one unit of currency, right? So in at bronze, it's four bronze points equals one dollar, or one rand, or one whatever uh, ISO currency you pick of your choice. So four to one. Silver is silver. Once I've got 200 bronze point, 200 points, I then go to silver. I can then go and say, aha, I now have got three points to one rand. Gold, two points to a dollar. Platinum, one point to a dollar. So please be aware of that over there. At the same time, we also have redemption percentages that are also set here. Now, these redemption percentages being how much you can spend in any one transaction. If I have 200 points, and I am on bronze, I can only spend 70% of those, which means I can, pro I can only really spend about 140 points. Okay, there is math to back me up on that. 
uh, which also goes, I can spend 140 points, which divided by four means that I can only actually really spend uh, about 35 bucks. So yeah, that's something else to just keep a, keep an eye on. Say, uh, right over here on silver, same thing, 80, uh, I can spend 80% and then uh, gold and then platinum, you see how those work. But the other thing to remember that with bronze is that even though I can spend 35 bucks of my uh, 35 bucks of my points, which is 140 of them, uh, I will still have 60 points left, which means the next transaction that I do, I can then spend 70% uh, of those 60 points that remain, and so on and so on. Uh, yeah, it does mean that they will probably never get to a zero balance, but at the same time, yeah, you just want to be careful about that. Please be careful about how you're going to set these up, right, so that they actually work with the customer and that they're understandable. Once again, please remember the cashier does actually need to go and cashier at some point will be asked to explain how people earn certain points. So just be aware of that. All right. And please remember as well, for instance, you could have, say, uh, five points to two points of currency if you wanted to go weird. That's over there that you can go set up. All right, but beyond that, uh, we actually finally get to our loyalty plans. Now, in loyalty, you need to have at least one plan. Right. If you don't have one plan, then you, have, uh, then you are not earning any points. And the plan that you'll normally have is at least one basic plan. You can have as many plans as you want. And remember, all of these plans will fall under one loyalty program. So let's open up the basic plan. Now, you do get different over here. You uh, set which loyalty program it goes to, which code, as well as what, uh, what the name is. Finally, you also get uh, which plan type, normal, special days or special days for customers. Uh, you'll note that there are two special days ones, the special days being linked to the loyalty special days, so for specific dates, special days for customers being linked to the anniversary or birthdays that are set in the actual customers themselves. So from there, start date, start time, so when it starts, for your basic plan, this will be right at the very beginning of the uh, loyalty plan. There shouldn't be a date and there shouldn't be an end date unless they're drastically changing it for some reason, right? But the, or otherwise they're doing away with the loyalty system. Can happen. Otherwise, and then finally, is it active or not? Uh, before I go into the actual plan details, I'm gonna come down here to the applicable section, and this is gonna go say where it's applicable, so which stores it's applicable at. Remember, you can go divide up your stores into different regions or different types, so they can determine which stores they're applicable at or not. Uh, you can also go and set which days of the week, as well as which times of the days of the week the loyalty is active. Once again, check your local laws to go see where it's, uh, uh, to see what uh, they say about when, where, how, and why. Beyond that, you can also set up uh, exception rules for special days. So exclude items on promotion. Uh, all items with a discount override, discounts greater than a certain percentage, uh, uh, all items with a price override, price override greater than a certain amount, and exclude, exclude items on layaway. Once again, check what exactly they want before you set it up. Next up, we can also, next up we actually get to the plan details. Remember, we can have as many plans as we want, and we can also do things like exclude. So you can go set which, uh, where, what gets excluded. So for instance, if you want to, to exclude a specific customer, you can do that over here. Um, you can also go and do things like must award. Now must award will actually go and check through and it will award part points if things, uh, if it goes and it calculates that way. Um, but that's up to you about exactly how you go and you set that one up over here. We, after that, we get to which customer types we're looking at, specific customer codes, specific customer groups. Um, if you wanted to go set those there, which levels, so once again, bronze, silver, platinum, gold, right. Uh, and then beyond that, how do you award? Is it on, for specific items, do you get points? Specific item groups, do you get points? 
promotions, layaways, bill values, quantities, all of these things you can go set so that they can get specific points. Then, once you've gone and you've set that, what is the criteria value? Is it over here on the top one, you see I've set it for bill value, so for every one of the bill, for every bill, right? Or otherwise, is it greater than, or is it equal to every 10, uh, to every uh, uh, 10 that you uh, 10 bills that you do, or is it greater than? So you need to buy, have bought with me every uh, 10 times this month, and then we go and we activate it. All right. What is the calculation basis? Is it on amount, or is it on quantity? So over here, you'll see if I go to things like items, it normally goes and it, it will normally be on quantity. Otherwise, if it's on layaways, bill values, bill quantity, anything like that, if I switch it to bill quantity, it just gives me the option for quantity. Okay, then beyond that, we get, right there, is it on every amount greater than or equal to? So now that I've selected amount up at the top one, it's for every $100, I get 10 points. Otherwise, quantity is it for every, say, 10 items? Uh, is it every 10 items? Then I get a point, or 100 points, or whatever it is. And then finally, on tender type. So, is it for a specific tender? So, is it uh, say for if you get if you spend cash, or if you spend credit card or debit card, then you get more points. Otherwise. Uh, otherwise, it, um, otherwise you get less points the other way around. These are things you can also go set up. So technically, you can send, up, you can put, you get extra points for spending loyalty points, as provided you have your other settings set as well. So these are also things to consider. Then finally, uh, you've got your finally what do you award points or currency. And please remember, you can interchange them. It's not recommended because otherwise you will confuse people. And please remember, guys, that is the one thing about uh, about loyalty, is that you can set up plans that can be very confusing. Um, you need to sit down, you need to work through the plans, you need to, uh, to understand exactly how they work, what they do, what they set together, where everything fits. Uh, and please also rem remember to test this. A lot of times when I do training days, for loyalty, I go see people setting up plans that only worked for five minutes last week, Tuesday. So, of course, for an item that was out of stock. Please remember, set it up, or set this up in a test system, test that it works, and then roll it out. Nine times out of ten, people seem to go and just roll it out and expect it to work, and there's a flaw in their logic, and then people get very angry at not having loyalty points. So. Please be careful of that. So there is my loyalty plans. But once I've done that, I can then also come across and set up things like membership groups. So, and guys, please remember, uh, up until now, up until loyalty plan is your basic loyalty system. Once you've set up loyalty plans, you don't, that's all you really need for a basic system. Beyond this, we now get into some of the more, how shall I, how shall I say? some of the bells and whistles that we can do for loyalty to go get things set up. And one of the first things that we can look at is our membership group. So the entire idea over here is, for instance, if you have uh, one of the ones we have out here in South Africa is a, uh, is a buying group for a school. So let's say uh, you go along to the stores, you go to a, uh, they've got a thing called My, My School, and you want to go support uh, support the school every time you go and you swipe there, they go and they get, the school gets extra loyalty points. You could have that set up as a loyalty membership group over here. With that, you select which loyalty program it goes to, what code it will be, uh, it will be part of, what description you'll be looking at, the available points, available currency, awarded points, awarded currency, because remember those can be different. Uh, how many points have been redeemed and uh, rede or redeemed currency, expired and expired currency, and then your different levels, if uh, which level they are at. This over here is just a basic summation of your particular status of this membership. And then is it active or not? After this, you can add in your various loyalty customers to your different two here, so that they all fall under the same membership group. 
and then somebody would normally go and manage this and see exactly what points people are earning at what at what time. Next one up is the actual loyalty cards. Now, if your loyalty system is set to register on loyalty cards, as opposed to being uh, set to customer code, it will just create the loyalty cards over here. If we're going to open up Paul, you will see it looks very, very similar to your, uh, to your customer. Uh, that is because they are essentially the same. This is just a slightly cut down version of it. Um, but it does also mean that if you set to customer code, it will automatically go put this in here as well, just to go and make sure that it goes and it matches up everything. And then we get to the inevitable point of the loyalty adjustment journal. Now, the idea is with this is that when somebody goes and messes up their program in such a way that people don't actually get the points that are due them, there will actually be a moment where they will need to go and adjust the points for whatever reason. So in order to do this, you can go put in a reference number and notes, which is adjust points because uh, plan failed. Let's do that one. Okay, so over here I can add a loyalty customer. And we are going to go and give Mr. Edward Robinson some points. So he's got 2,000 points available currency. So you see it does actually still, it does have the points and the currency is separate. Um, and we're now going to go and adjust his points. And the interesting thing here is that if you want to take away points, you put a minus in front. So we're going to do a minus 100 points because we can. Or if you want to change the level, this is where you manually change the level if you want to do that. You can also import a file in, so a TXT file or a, um, a TXT file you prepared to go and adjust the points whichever way you want. That can be uh, set up over here. Oh, well, in this particular case, an Excel, uh, an Excel file, you can go and then pull that in to go and adjust the points how you want it. Let's go and adjust Edward Robinson's points by minus 100. Click OK. It then goes and posts through to the system. Customer and search. And here's Edward. And loyalty points details say... There's the adjustment that got put through, minus 100, and that's now been adjusted for there. So there, you can now go see that entered into the system. Now, next one that we have is... Oh, pardon? Okay, so that's the loyalty adjustment journal. Uh, please remember that is very handy, particularly when people go mess up their loyalty points or forget to get their points or didn't get awarded their points because something failed. A loyalty card transfer, please be very careful with this one. This is something that always pops up. People think, oh, I'm just going to transfer this card from here to here. When you transfer the loyalty card, it will close one card to another. So what happens is, is that let's say you've got somebody who's going away. I'm immigrating overseas. I leave or I go say, here you go, Eddie, take my points. Right. I go and to my loyalty card transfer, my loyalty card will then go and move my points from here, from my card to Eddie's card permanently, right? If, for instance, I had my card stolen and I need a new card, I can then open up a new loyalty card, which will come through as a new loyalty card over here in the system. And then I can go and... Uh, I can then go pick it up and I can transfer my points from my old loyalty card to my new loyalty card. That way stopping people from going and spending my points on my old loyalty card. All right. But please remember this doesn't do part transfers. You want to do part transfers, you do a loyalty adjustment journal. You want to do you want to close a card, you do your loyalty card transfer. And then finally I have my pre-printed loyalty cards where I can then receipt my pre-printed cards into the system. I can see exactly how they are received and which, which stores, and it also means that I can keep track of where my loyalty cards are. Uh, this can be quite important, particularly for bonus cards on registration. As I'm sure you guys know, people get creative as soon as they smell money, and then they try and go set up scam networks. So this can be very ha handy going and tracking who does what, where, when, how, and why. 
Finally, I am just going to go across and let's just have a look at some of our reports. We do have an entire section of loyalty reports over here, right? So things like loyalty customer journals, uh, which if and once again on these you do need to select which program. So once you do that, it will then pop up with the actual loyalty journal. And you can see who did what, where, when, and how, and why. As well as we do have a complete set of dashboards as well, including things like the finance view for loyalty and uh, guides of your consultants. This is always the one that you go and you, that I end up going and showing at demos because it's the one that's it's nice and colourful and the sales guys seem to like that. So they like to go see, ooh, it's so shiny. So that is something else that you can go and have. And it, uh, on the demo stack, it actually pops up with a nice set of colors to go and actually have over here. All right. Okay, any questions? No questions. Okay. So let's just go across. I just want to go across to my loyalty portal over here. And this over here is my customer loyalty portal. I can then sign in as a, uh, let's go there. And that should be, let's see if this goes and allows me in, or am I going to need to sign in as somebody else? Ah, it doesn't like me on here. Okay. We're going to go with Paul White. And here you go, you can then sign in. Uh, not a very entertaining dashboard, unfortunately, but it is something that you can have a look at. Uh, this over here, you can see the different transactions that have been done for Paul, as well as you can also get people to log in, uh, do things like inviting friends, as well as uh, doing invitations. There we go. So referrals, uh, if you go, you can get them to do here. You can also get them to update their contact details, which does mean that you can get this updated directly back into iVend. It also means that you uh, you can also go show and hide the different uh, fields over here by, if I come along to here, and here's a trick if you are going and doing anything with our um, with either of our uh, of our sites, either e-commerce or with this uh, loyalty portal, you can then go and get people to go log in as different as uh, either or. So I'm going to go and log in as, uh, I think it's admin. There we go. And, but this over here is a separate set of, um, this is a separate set of things that we can have a look at. Uh, as well, numbering series, email templates, pages, widgets, file editors. Uh, this is something for another uh, webinar because I can see we're rapidly approaching the end over here. Uh, finally, um, let's just go quickly head back across here. We've seen the loyalty plan, we've seen the group membership, and finally I just wanted to talk quickly about passes because the entire idea about passes is that they are meant to be uh, lo your loyalty cards as well as your coupons and uh, your uh, coupons and gift certificates. So this is something that you may that you do want to go and have a look at. Please remember with the loyalty passes, you can go and geolocate them. So if somebody walks past a store, they can get an alert going and saying, "Hey, you've got so many points available to you for your loyalty." Um, the other thing is as well. Uh, actually, I had a rather interesting one from a customer. They went and they said, hey, every time they go near one of the opposition stores, can we have a po something that pops up and goes and says, hey, you've got this many points to go spend with us. Why do you know, don't spend it with the opposition, come and spend it with us instead. So that is something else to go and consider. Please remember, you can be a bit cheeky with these things. But once again, this is something else that you will go and have a look at at your, um, this is something else to have a look at with the uh, with another webinar. I know I've mentioned at least two different other webinars that we can do now, but um, seeing we are at the end of this, I think we've covered most of it. So finally, uh, are there any questions? I'd like to open the floor to questions if there are any out there. George, any questions? Guys? I'm going to start singing in a minute unless unless somebody asks a question or just says uh, or or says anything. But if there are no questions, then uh, ah right yeah JP. 
All right, no questions. Okay, no thanks for the singing. Okay, all right, well, then I will spare you people the singing. All right, so, uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, let's go, let's go back across. Uh, unless there's anything else? Well, then I think we've covered this one pretty well. All right, uh, all right, gentlemen. Uh, so nice of you to go join in on this fine day. Thanks for taking an hour out at least to go and uh, pretend to work. Um, I'm glad to go help you on that level. Let's go. Uh, looking forward to join uh, to going and seeing you again on some more of the uh, on of these webinars as they come up. Uh, and if there are any other questions, please don't hesitate to go and. Uh, to go and send them across or to go send them to the portal, uh, more specifically the forum, and we'll get back to you and answer them as soon as possible. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and we will chat soon. Keep well. Bye.